Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. For today's midweek meta deck, we are playing Mad Max Ernst Legacy Challenge winning decklist. This is a quintessential blue black scam decklist. So the name scam comes from the idea of griefing somebody and then reanimating that grief on the first turn, which is a bit of a scammy way to win the game, I guess, is where the name comes from. But we are a sort of blue black middle range sort of deck but we've got some explosive plays like i mentioned with the grief early on so we have the tools you would expect from a blue black deck so we've got a bunch of cantrips in the form of brainstorm ponder we've got force of wills we've got a couple of days in here to go with wastelands so we've got a little bit of a man of denial tempo s strategy so if we make like the grief early on we can sort of ride that tempo play and just keep it going we also have troll of kaza doom which we can cycle to get a nice land to fix our colours, but then we can then reanimate that and have a massive threat. We have one Lorien revealed when the game gets really long. This can just be some mana fixing early on, but if you ever cast this for the five mana, it's very, very good indeed. We have three Merc Tired as our other threat alongside our Orcish Bowmasters, and that's pretty much it for our threat package. We do have one Brazen Borrow. This is more a utility card to bounce out problem things. We've got three Fatal Pushes and one Snuff Out. And a Shoulder's Edict. So we've got a decent bunch of removal going on as well. Sauron's Ransom. This is a card that I don't think we've played with yet on the channel. But it's a real good one. Um, it's kind of like the exact right power level. Where your opponent has to make some decisions. There's a little bit of gameage going back and forth between you. And you can sometimes ruin your opponent's piles or whatever. So it's going to have a lot of fun playing with this one today. It's kind of like the new Fact or Fiction really. And we have one Nars at Pirate Veils. Which is a card that I think should be seeing more play right now. Because of all the Beanstalk decks and things like that. I think Narset is just a really powerful tool to shut down your opponent's card advantage. So we've got one of those in there. Mana base wise, we've got ourselves a full set of Underground Sea, one Swamp, one Island, a Mystic Sanctuary, and then a bunch of Fetch Lands. So a pretty standardish mana base you'd expect for this sort of deck. We're not playing anything like a Watery Grave for an additional Underground Sea, and we're not a Death Shadow decklist either. Cyber wise, we've got a whole array of tools here. So we've got some things for like control your matchups where we want to have more card advantage of things. So we've got things like the Narset and the Palantir to help with things like that. We've got answers to artifacts in the form of Null Rod here. We've got a little bit of hand disruption from the Turak. We've got these, we've got Flusterstorm, Hydroblasts. So we've basically got all sorts of different ways of dealing with different things. So we're going to be sort of shaving some numbers here and there. Sometimes we need more counter spells. Sometimes we'll need a way to deal with creatures. With coming to play abilities like Thassa's Oracle and stuff, so Dress Down will help there. We've got a bit of Graveyard Hay, we've got Plague Engineer. So we've kind of got a lot of different tools that can go alongside the things we're doing in the main deck or replace some of them when they're not good. But you'll see it as we go, and I don't want to spend too long on this deck tech. So yeah, this is a Mad Max Ernst Legacy Challenge winning deck list. There's been a bit of a decrease in scam lately due to the new set coming out, but that might just be people playing the new stuff. But I think some of the Beanstalk decks are pretty good into the Scam decks because they kind of just draw enough cards to get through it. But we shall see how it all pans out today. Remember to like and subscribe and let's get some Legacy going. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? We're on the play for round one, not a bad place to be. We do have a brainstorm we can use to fix things if necessary. I think this one is a keep. We've got removal, we've got counter magic, and we've got some ways of getting into our deck with the brainstorm and the Soren's Ransom a bit later. And we do have a threat Merc type, but that's going to require us to find something along the way to put in our graveyard. So we're going to need some fetch lands and stuff like that. A once upon a time, okay. So while we're looking at something on the fairer spectrum of things, or this could be something like a cloud post type deck. Windswept Heath. Okay, so probably looking at something a bit like the Cradle Control deck lists or Maverick. Be my guess. We have Days and Fatal Push available this turn if necessary. All right, they're just playing the Heath out, so we have no additional information. Let's see what they go for here. I think I'm more inclined to use our Fatal Push this turn if possible, because that means we can untap Brainstorm into our second land drop. Right, so they're cracking the windswept teeth for a basic forest. It's going to be a reclaimer, a noble hierarch. I think I'm okay to take this one out at end step. This makes our days a lot better as well if they don't have a one drop in play. 
Right, so now we'll cast this. We're looking for our second land drop here. Okay. Not good. That's how I describe this one. So we're going to have to put these back and we'll just work through this pile. Not great. We've got days available. But if our opponent just snaps off a wasteland here, then it lights out. Okay, no wasteland. That's they know our hand is just full of spells, though. Right, I'll buy you. A once upon a time being cast, sure. Our opponent isn't the least uh, running away with things right now, which is good. Right, so we've got a nice target for a fatal push next turn. And we'll pass. So we've got one more Orcish Bowmasters to draw through. And then we can try and hit a land. There's a Misty Rainforest. Sure, you can have your feed out, Azan. And then we will fail push this. They could have something like a Veil of Summer here. We can count that with the days. Right, so here's the other Orcish Bowmasters. We need to survive. Well, I say survive. We need to not fall too far behind this turn and hopefully draw a land next turn. We really don't want our opponent to have a wasteland. That makes me sad. Right, so they've got Dried Arbors. That's like nice we can kill with the Bowmasters if we find a land. Green Sun's then if X equals 1. I think we fire this off here. We have a choice what we're getting rid of here. I think it wants to be the ransom here. This gives us a flexibility of days and force of will here. All right, there's a cradle over to us. A land, not a land. My friend's got four cards in hand. Uh, I think we will fire this off, exiling a bowmasters. It gives us a better idea how we need to use the resources available to us to survive another turn. Uh, natural order, it's kind of annoying. Endurance, also kind of annoying. Grist, also kind of annoying. Uh, I think we'll take out the Grist here. The others we can clean up with Force of Will or Days. So at the moment they have four mana. So they can natural order here, but it'll be straight into whatever we have. They can try and endurance us. Okay, so now they can pay around the Days. They've got a second Dried Arbor usually in these decks. There we are. So the plan here is Force of Will pitching Days on this natural order. Days has outlived its usefulness. If we find a land, we can smash a Merktide down, which will be all right. We did find a land. We could snipe away their guy and strand them this Endurance in their hand, or we could just say, I want a Merktide right now. I think the Merktide is the better shout here. This is their opportunity to pitch cast this Endurance. But they can't because the other card in their hand is Cradle. So we are safe on that one. So now we'll make ourselves a big Merc Tide. While well, we still can. Just go underground and see here. Smash out this Merc Tide. So we want blue, blue. And make it large, I think. We could. I'm debating. We're a long way off of doing any um, Mystic Sanctuary things. So I think we're just going to get rid of the Fatal Push here. Just to make our creature as big as possible. But if we had a third land in play right now, then maybe we make our Merktide one smaller, but have the opportunity to draw the Mystic Sanctuary or a fetch land. So we can at least get our Fatal Push back, because Fatal Push is going to be pretty good against our opponent's deck. We do still have the Grief in there in, in case we draw a Reanimate, though. There's three mana in our opponent's pool. This feels like an Endurance. Four mana. Do they top deck another natural order? No, this is a Green Sun Zenith, the way they paid for the mana, I think. Yep, a Green Sun Zenith where X equals 3. Can't do anything about that. Let's see what they find. A Grist. Okay, so they're just going to minus this and kill our... Uh, kill our Mercti Regent by sacrificing the Dried Up. Okay. So we do get to clean up their Grist with our Orcish Bowmasters here. I think we leave this Underground Sea in hand for now, in case we draw a... Brainstorm, we get a little bit more into our deck. Also, this might make our opponent play around a potential days. A borrower. All right, we're going to play this out now. And we get attacks. They can't play the endurance because they don't have a third degree mana because the cradle doesn't tap for mana. So we can play this borrower if we need to. Allosaurus Shepherd. Okay, so tapping the cradle for one here. Playing the other cradle. Sure, they have an endurance. Exile. They're going to put my graveyard on the bottom, I suspect. Yeah. Uh, let's just bounce this endurance away. That's how we've left it up here. Troll of Khazadum is an interesting one, isn't it? 
Are we supposed to be attacking with both of our guys here? If we turn off the cradle, that could just jam our opponent right up. So I think it's worth attacking with both here. Our opponent isn't a deck that draws a bunch of cards. I think we're better off playing this borrower than we are getting this troll of Kazadoom into our graveyard. I'd rather use this to shuffle off of a brainstorm or ponder, or alternatively go and find a Mystic Sanctuary if we have a useful spell down the line. Sorry, this can't find Mystic Sanctuary. Um, but yes, yeah, so if we want to shuffle off of the brainstorm or the ponder, or have a creature card in our graveyard for the purposes of reanimate. A noble Hierarch, this will give them the mana off of Cradle to still make the Endurance when they wish. We're coming for two here, that's fine. We do need to find a little bit more gas along the way. Our opponent is ahead right now. If they put the Endurance in in response here, they do. They're going to put their own cards on the bottom for the purposes of tutoring for more Grists? They are, okay. A Grief. So if we'd have gone to get this last turn, we could have been making this this turn. That doesn't actually help us out here, but I think we are now swamp cycling this. Putting ourselves on the ground C. Play this. We're not attacking into this board, unfortunately. If our opponent wants to attack with Endurance, then they get attacked back with Brazen Borrower. If they attack with just the Allosaurus Shepherd, we can take two, or we can trade two guys for it. It's not ideal. We're trying to dodge quite a few things from our opponent's deck right now. Free Narzan being one of them. All right. See so how aggressive our opponent wants to be here. I think pushing with the Allosaurus Shepherd is fine. But they might just want to keep creatures in play, because the more mana they have, the better their Finarzan's going to be, so they might as well just take a slightly longer route and just say, I'm not going to lose any guys in combat here. I'm just going to have my Cradle Tavern for max mana next turn. Which I think is a fine play to do. Yeah, that's what they've opted for. A Grief, you say. Uh, we are just casting this as a creature that can attack. My opponent has no cards in hand, but... This requires two creatures to block it, at least. If we drew another Bowmasters, we could have attacked with our Borrower and then pinged down the Endurance. Alternatively, we might have just pinged off the Fiendizan straight away because it's the scariest thing there. But the Grief requires two creatures to block it, which means that Endurance can't just swallow it. It'll have to, they'll have to trade one thing for it because of the Menace on it. That means you're trading like a one drop for a four drop or something, which isn't great for it. So I think they can make a six drop here, right? Four, five, six, seven mana, yeah. So that should be a, a six drop that our opponent can throw at us. All right, X is one here. Query on Ranger, okay. So they're doing this just to grow the Artisan. Sure, another Endurance. I think we're going to lose our Troll here. That's fine. I think the Reanimate's uh, looking less and less good when they have more and more power. I think we still cast it if we drew it though. We're getting rid of the Allosaurus Shepherd. X equals two, a Bowmasters. That's going to ping down our Borrower most likely. Yeah. So now they can block with two Endurances and our Grief doesn't do anything. So I don't think they need to attack here. Oh, they're going for an attack though. That is interesting. Uh, what are we supposed to do about this attack? Can we just take it? Yeah, so next turn we're going to get crate hoofed anyway, so pretty sure this game is over. Island not really going to do it for us. I think we have to attack with our grief and hope that we can eat some of their guys. Next turn, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six mana, seven, eight mana, nine mana off of this. So that's enough to crate hoof us. All right, we could play this grief, but it's not going to soak up the damage here. If they draw crate hoof, it's also lethal. All right, what are they doing here? Only X equals two. They don't have Crate Hoof in their deck. Interesting. So they have another Cradle? No, they've just played their Forest. Double Phenars and Activation to turn is uh, quite the drug, isn't it? This game is over, I would say. I'm not really sure we can draw to get back in here. Our opponent is only on nine, but they've got the Skies gummed up with these Endurances. X equals three on this Phenars and We just can see another Endurance, maybe? Or have they got something a bit spicier to find? Nope, just another endurance. Sure. Our opponent's been quite slow with this. But uh, they've got a lot of decisions. They've got a tutor box to use. I don't think we need to keep playing this game, to be honest. Our opponent is so far ahead. It's not worth either of our times there. 
So what do we want here? Plague Engineer to sweep up a load of little mana dorks. More removal is always helpful. Dress Down definitely has some uses in this matchup. Flusterstorm just to counter Zenith and Natural Order can be okay. But we're just better off with hard counters. I think Daze is going to be that useful for us here. I think we probably still need forces just so we can strip out the natural order plays. Um, Narset can probably go. It's not really the matchup for that. Bowmasters is fine here. They have so many X1s. I quite like that. Borrower is fine, but not exceptional. Can trim on a borrower here. All this stuff's so cheap. Bouncing isn't necessarily the most useful. I guess we can't deal with an attract so it's in play unless we bounce it or we have shoulders edict as well actually yeah i'm gonna go with this hmm this hand could do with a bit of removal but we've got some plays here i think we'll keep this we can shuffle off our brainstorm quite effectively we'll just lead out with an underground sea so we can do a turn one brainstorm if we want to and then troll of Kazadoom in our upkeep but we'll see what our opponent plays. If they play an X1, then I'm likely to try and do that just to find the the Bowmaster. Right, they've shown us an Endurance. And they've got themselves a little Noble Hierarch. I think I will fire off his end of turn Brainstorm. So we can untap into a... That's not really the one we want to untap into, is it? So, what is useful here? Not a lot, truth be told. So we've got Force of Will blue card, we've got black card here, so I think we're probably just putting a couple of things on top like this. And then I think we will Swamp Cycle to get rid of those cards in our upkeep. Find ourselves an underground sea, draw a fresh one. It was one of the ones we shuffled away, as things often end up being. We could play out the Wasteland here. Or we could play out the Underground Sea. I think we play out the Wasteland here so we can at least represent messing with our opponent's mana a little bit. Like, we could represent a Fatal Push or something here, but why wouldn't we just fire it off on the Noble Iraq anyway? I think it's better off to actually have some interaction going. Now, they get to play the land and do stuff with it when they want to anyway, but it gives them an opportunity to missequence their plays. Like Wooded Foothills. I suspect it's probably just getting them a basic, but we'll see. A fiend artisan. I don't really want to deal with that. Our opponent is representing Veil of Summer, which would be going to be backbreaking if they have it here. Can I afford to force of will into Veil of Summer here? I don't think I can. I think we are going to hold this force of will. We've got removal in our deck. Obviously not in our hand, but sometimes the price you pay. What are they going for here? Is it basic? It's not a basic. Okay, we will take this out in step. We could have played out the second wasteland there, but I don't want our opponent to know we have it necessarily. Another Hierarch. Okay. They're going to play a Cradle here and tap for three. Yeah. So we don't get to interact with that Cradle anyway if we hold up the wasteland because the moment they play it, they get the mana. We do. We did trim one mana off of it. Though. X equals three. Can't interact with this. Endurance. That's annoying, but fine. So we're sort of the match, one of the matchups that these decks are designed to do pretty well into at the end of the day. I ponder, okay. I will ponder. Looking for Fatal Push here. Uh, Reanimate's not the one. Shoulder's Edict, pretty interesting, but not right now. Mm, I don't think we can afford to keep playing this game the way we are right now. I think, I think we need to shuffle this and try and find a Fatal Push. Right, we found one of the cards we just put back. So we put out the Wasteland, we take out the Cradle. And then we continue to get beat down by these guys because they're, they're probably going to come at us for four this turn i don't know if they're going to shoot something up with the fiend and if not then i guess we're taking six uh, that can't be counted so this force of wood in our hand looks pretty bad there's another cradle here comes the natural order which should be lethal four eight twelve okay no this is not a natural order then. unless they're just doing it around a daze no, they're just activating the Fiend Eyes then. Okay, so we're not dead yet. But it's going to be tough. You know, knowing our opponent had a double cradle draw, uh, I probably would have force of willed this Fiend Eyes even into the very telegraphed Veil of Summer there. 
just on the off chance I didn't have it at that point. Sure, Bowmasters is pretty handy. It's going to stop us from being able to ponder or brainstorm into better things. I think they're supposed to do that after attacks, so that they get one additional point damage with their endurance. Not that that's going to be the be-all and end-all here anyway, but that's just a slightly cleaner way of doing it. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Like, I think we have to waste land here, but then we are just losing the stuff on board. So next turn, we've got, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we can make a Merc Tide next turn, but it will be smaller than their Fiend Artisan, which is pretty bad news for us. An Elvish Reclaimer. We'll say no to this one, because it's something we actually get to do. It does put another creature in the graveyard, so this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So even if we block... Yeah, I don't know how we're supposed to win this one. We're going to need... We need a Damnation in our deck that costs 3 mana, which we don't have. So there's the Fatal Push that we've been wanting for a while. We can take out the Fiend Artisan. That leaves 3, 4, 5, 6 damage. So we can hit the Fiend Artisan, play a Murktide region, block the Endurance, and then we still die to these three guys. Yep. Just had us there. I think the first game was closer. If we'd have not bricked on that draw for land, I think we would have been in a lot better shape. All right, let's go to round two. I think this hand is fine. We have removal. We have counter magic. We have dig to make sure we can make our second land drop. I know we didn't get paid off doing that in the first round, but statistically we are odds on for this. So we'll keep. We're also on the draw, so we're going to see one more card as well. I'd be very surprised if we didn't make our second land drop. And we don't need a... Specific land to play this Orcish Bowmasters, we can just play it off of a Wasteland if we need to. Alright. A Bloodstained Mire, that's uh, interesting. They just played and pass. Alright, drawing a Force of War is nice. Uh, I would like to crack this Polluted Delta in response to our opponent cracking their Bloodstained Mire. We know we're not getting Wasteland at this turn because they've already played their land. But if our opponent is on some sort of reanimated deck, we'd like maximum amount of interaction. Thought Seize, you say. How do I feel about Thought Seize? Interesting. I think I want to brainstorm in response. I want to hide this Force of Will. Oh, jeez. We got hit again by the same problem. Not a fan. We do at least have a Troll of Khazad Doom next turn. So we need to put that on the top card. Which means we're probably not throwing away the Force of Will here. We're throwing away the... Merktide, and then we put the Kazadium on top because we can't afford to have that thought seize. Yuck. They're probably just going to take the Force of Will here. They took a Bowmasters. That's interesting. So this is probably less of a combo matchup than we were suspecting. Let's cycle this one. Get ourselves on the ground. See, this gives us access to Double Days now. So we have Double Days and Force of Will blue card. If that's the access this game is being fought on. The Snuff Out might not be very useful. Maybe that was... On the card that was supposed to go there. Another thought sees. Okay, so this turn we lose the force of will, I suspect. Sauron's ransom. Okay, it's definitely feel like a, a long grindy control game. Probably Grixis control. I could be wrong though. A brainstorm. My opponent could be a storm deck. A ponder. I'm gonna fight with this ponder. Feels like our opponent. Like, these days are not going to get much better from this point onwards. And it feels like our opponent is clearly digging for something. So I'd rather be able to get myself in a position where I get to jam a Bowmasters with days up. Our opponent's taking a decent amount of damage. If they are on some sort of um, Death Shadow deck, then I would have been surprised by uh, them fetching the Underground. But they could be on some sort of scammy thing. Him to Turak, we can either choose which cards go away, which would be like Force of Will Days, probably, or we can let it hit randomly. I'm kind of happy if it hits our snuff out. I think this is okay to let it resolve. Okay, it kind of didn't hit great for us there, but those were two of the cards that might have got pitched anyway. All right, we just drew another one again. So this Days is now the blue card because our opponent has a lot of land over there. Feels like Quixis Control. It's going to be a Colligan's Command. Um, interesting. Feels like they're really trying to get rid of our Bowmasters here. Would I rather just keep this 1 1 and have this? I think I would rather just keep this uh, Orc Army around and then just have the 
the ability to stop sign like a NASA or something that can really take this game over. It does half our clock though. My opponent is drawing a lot of lands. Mystic Sanctuary. That's not quite the one, is it? They know we have a day, so they're not going to play into this day at any point. Right, they do have another spell in hand, though. All right, so now we can put Mystic Sanctuary, give ourselves a Sauron's Ransom, and really start eating away with a load of card advantage. A reanimate. Okay, I don't hate this one. Um. Honestly, I think I would rather have an Orcish Bowmasters here just to cut out some of our opponent's draws. Although the troll is a one turn kill. Sure. Let's just put the one turn kill in and put this game over and done with. We do have Force of Will, Force of Will Days in hand. This is a hard cast Force of Will, I believe. Yep. So we could force back here if you feel that's necessary. Not sure it is. I think I would rather play this and put this Sauron's Ransom on top of our library. And now we have Force of Will to stop our opponent from getting back into the game. But, like We're already ahead, so I think it's... Like, we could have forced that, and then our opponent could play something that really messes us up. This way just feels the safest route. Um, I think we'll play this one. All right, our opponent gets to make some decisions here. We're doing 2v2 pile, by the looks of it. How useful is Grief right now? Grief doesn't really advance our game plan, so we're going to choose pile 2. Alright, so that's a pretty good pile. We have double force of will here. We could ponder into something, though. What are we pondering into this turn? That's a good question. I don't think... Alright, what was this going to be? Single black mana, a fatal push. Okay. That makes me more inclined to ponder now and try and find an answer. Uh, sorry, a threat. Um... Okay, so we'll put Polluted Delta on the bottom, then the Bowmasters, I think, then the Brainstorm. This means we have Forcible Blue card times two, and the Bowmasters can't be Thought Seized. Nothing from my opponent there. I think it is better to Orcish Bowmasters in our opponent's upkeep than it is to do it in our turn. Reason being, our opponent will have to, if they have like a I cast force of will, it'll tap them out their whole turn as well. This means they also, they would have had a cantrip, uh, they would have played a cantrip if they had it last turn. All right, we got the game there. So this does feel like a Grixis control deck. So we're gonna want controly type things here as well. Gonna wanna be able to deal with some of their bits and pieces. Hydroblast definitely are somewhat useful here. Dress down can counter a snap cast mage, which isn't necessarily the worst. They have hand disruption in a way that's kind of annoying for us as well. I think we probably want the Palantir here as well. It's just a very nice engine that forces answers out. They're mainly going to be trying to stop what we're doing. I don't think we want to be on Force of Wills here. I think we just want to keep proposing threats and things. I'm not sure Snuff Out's where we want to be. I'd rather have a play Engineer on Human. It can at least stop Snapcast from doing stuff. Force of Negation is tempting because our opponent's probably going to have some amount of Narset type stuff themselves. And this one is the one we can cast more easily. So we're going to go with something like this. Our opponent's got more tools for control, so we're not going to win the control game. But if we can just keep throwing threats at our opponent, I think that will be a reasonable plan. Turak doesn't seem amazing here. Flusterstorm is pretty good, actually. I think I quite like a Flusterstorm. What is this going to go in place of? Maybe we trim one of our reanimates? Because our opponent's going to have more graveyard hate. Sure, we'll try some of that. This hand seems okay. We can kind of sit on the grief for a little bit and then use it to punch a hole through and put this Narsa into play, which should do a decent amount of work in this matchup. Our opponent's going to be attacking our hand as well with things like Thoughtseize. So we have to keep an eye on that. I don't believe our opponent plays Wastelands. I think that makes me want to fetch now so we don't get annoyed by weird timings. If our opponent could cast a spell, we might crack in response and they crack and do something else. Now, if they do play a Wasteland here, we're going to feel pretty bad, but I'm pretty sure Grixis Control can't afford to play Wastelands. But it's him to tour X and stuff. Hmm, interesting. So no Bowmaster's Mana here. Will our opponent Pyroblast... 
our ponder here. Uh, I think any order shuffle. Talent here. Okay, I don't hate that one. So next turn we can fire off this grief and see if the coast is clear for one of our three drops. If we find a land. So we might be inclined to brainstorm at end of turn to try and hit that land drop. Has our opponent brainstorm locked themselves here? Could be. That does mean they just have a grip full of spells. But I think that means this is the turn we end of turn brainstorm, try and make sure that we can hit our third land drop and then grief punch a hole through and see if we can stick something good or at least force a nice two for one counter spells on something like a Palantir and then untap and play the Narset because the Narset actually shuts down our opponent's deck whereas the Palantir is just a nice little engine that we can have rolling. Our opponent's disconnected from the game so maybe they didn't brainstorm lot themselves they're just having computer troubles or internet troubles or whatever. It happens. Right, they didn't brainstorm lot themselves, they played an island. Alright. Right, we need to find that third land I think here so we will be firing off this brainstorm. Which is pyroblastable. Alright, so we found some lands here. I don't know if we're in the market for Murktide just yet. So we can bury that one and then bury the Ponder. And then draw them. Alright. It's got a lot of basic lands over there. Curious if I should be worried by that. Alright, let's fire off this Grief and mess with our opponent's hand. Um, two Red Blasts, a Fluster Storm and a Lightning Bolt. Okay. Okay, that's a lot of stuff to work through here. Guess we're supposed to hit one of the Pyroblasts. So we know they can't counterspell this, whereas they can definitely counterspell our Narset. So we can do this, and next time we can play Narset with Flusterstorm Protection. So the top cards of our library, uh, Merktide is one of them. I think it's just the Merktide, isn't it? So we can leave this on top and dome our opponents for seven, or they give us a threat that we don't really want into this Shoulder's Edict anyway. Um, do you want both of these? We'll put this one on the bottom and this one on the top. Our opponent's going to take seven here. They could let us draw a card, but if we draw the Merc Tide, that's not the end of the world. We can play that. It does play into two of their different things they have. All right, they just took the seven, as I suspected they would. Okay. So we'll see this Badlands. They didn't find anything on there. All right. We have another Merc Tide. We know they've got double answers for this. They only have one answer for our Narset though. But they can Lightning Bolt it. Which is interesting. Let's go for this Ponder. Alright. Uh, I'm into this selection of cards. So I think we'll put the Ransom, then the Narset, then the Reanimate. I'm going to this. So they have a Fluster Storm here. Which is fine. We're just... Uh, we're just out here doing the things. So they're probably going to fluster storm this. And I don't think we fluster storm back here. They've got the mana to pay anyway, so it's not looking ideal. But we're just sort of whittling through our opponent's resources. I don't really want to play into the shoulder's idiot until we have the fluster storm up. So we're going to go to the end. And we're going to scry here. So we know the two cards on top of our deck are absolute bangers. If our opponent um, put them on top, put them on top. Our opponent can take six here. Yeah, okay. And it's our turn. A Plague Engineer. I honestly don't care about that card. It can attack into our Narset, but they've left themselves up with just Lightning Bolt, Red Blast. Fatal Push. Um, if we Narset here, it's a little bit awkward, isn't it? I think we will jam this Merc type thing. Um, so we've got Ponder, Brainstorm, Ponder... Reanimate. I'd like to leave Sauron's Ransom in there for when we get a thing in a bit. Right, so they're going to do this. And then we're going to cast. Is this worth casting here? They will then Shodra's Edict away our creature. We get rid of their Plague Engineer. So when they Shodra's Edict, we then get our Fatal Push ends up with uh, Revolt. So we get to kill their Plague Engineer. And then we can play our Nasa onto a more open board. Uh, brainstorm is not really the one we want. I think we'll put this one. Like, it's fine. Um, we'll leave it on top. All right. So what do they do there? They mill brainstorm and waste hand. Huh. That was another waste hand. Sure. So here comes the shoulders edict. Yep. We sacrifice our guy. We now have revolt. 
kill this. So we have a reanimate. So we can fire this off first onto our grief here. I imagine they're just going to lightning bolt in response to the trigger here. Yep, there it is. Where's their last card? Suddenly, it. sure, we'll take this. We'll cast this. And I'm not sure if we're supposed to gas up now or not, but if they draw a red blast, we do want to gas up. So I think we're just going to take this ponder. Is our opponent going to let us draw additional cards every turn here? Uh, bottom. Bottom. Uh, what do they mill there? Troll, Soren's Ransom, Fatal Push, Island, yeah. All right, so we got a nice win there. Let's go to round three. On the play for round three, what does our hand do? It's a little bit of a slow one. We don't really have any interaction, so we're going to need to find pieces. That could leave us in an awkward position. I think we need to mulligan something. Um, all right, this has got a very reasonable game plan. We can keep this. We'll throw back one of the ponders. So the plan here is turn one, reanimate, uh, turn one, cycle troll, turn two, put troll into play. That's a very strong, proactive game plan that will demand an answer in a very short space of time. If our opponent goes for a wasteland, we at least get to cycle in response anyway, and we can still make our guy a mountain. A lotus better. All right, we're going to see some unfair stuff here. A goblin welder. Okay, with that flavor of unfair. So this is going to be a painter deck. Swamp Cycles, get ourselves Underground Sea here. Oh, this is better than playing the troll. So we're going to do it. Golden Welder is a very scary Magic the Gathering card. So getting this out of play is nice. Orcs better than Goblins, that's what I've learned there. Okay. A Goblin Engineer. Oakley doakley. So they're going to put in their graveyard. Painter or Grindstone. A Snaring Bridge. Okay, so now we really want to find an answer to this engineer. We have a load of fatal pushes in our deck, so I'm going to try and high roll and find one here. Interesting. The borrower is nice to have for later, so I'll take that. So we'll put Mystic Sanctuary on top. I think that means we want the Ponder. And then we will evoke this, pitching the reanimate here. Fable the Mirror Breaker times two and Painter's Servant. Interesting. Take the painter. We could have taken both fables. So now the question is, are we putting the troll into play against this known and snaring bridge? Or we put in the grief. Like they both kind of attack or don't attack by the same amount here. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to attack with our rockish bowmaster. If they block with this, we will uh, reanimate it and ping down the engineer. I'm not expecting them to block here. Sure. So we could also get their Goblin Welder. And that can give them some real issues. That is an interesting play. If we get the Goblin Welder here, then what are we doing with the rest of our plan? So... We might be able to attack with the Grief. Oh, if we reanimate the Grief, we won't be able to attack. I think we're just going to get the Welder here. Because this can hit both players' things. So as long as they have an artifact in the graveyard, I can keep welding it out. It's going to be very hard for them to combo with this in play on our side of the board. Now, they have things like Fury in their deck, which can just sweep up everything here. We're kind of hoping they don't have that right now. We did just take a peek. So there's one of the Fables. So looting will come at a cost with this for them, for sure. This is also getting rid of an artifact, so I can't weld uh, stuff around and mess with them. Right, I think we start off with a Ponder here. We know one of the cards on top. Days is probably better than average here. But I don't really want to go for these other two cards. So I think we're going to go any order and shuffle. Right, so do one of the good ones there. I think we are on firing off another Ponder. Force of Will into Walkish Bowmasters is quite nice there. I guess we put the Underground Sea here and the Bowmasters and put the Force of Will on top. And I guess we pass. I'm settling in for a slightly longer game here. I don't think they're going to loot anything here because of the Bowmasters. They can loot one card. And then that just means they take one damage and that's probably fine. But I don't think they can afford to loot two cards and let us kill their Engineer or Shaman. Alright, 
Yes, they've they've uh, looped one card here. So what we'll do is we'll ping this Goblin Shaman here. Because this means if their Shaman attacks, our Orc army... Well, I guess our Orc army would kill it anyway, wouldn't it? Right, so it's a Fable. It's got one card in hand here. I don't think that's worth Force of Willing there. Um, let's go to attacks. Send this one in. So we want to cast this in their upkeep. So that any looting they do is bad for them. Uh, so I think we put one on the engineer here. So if they loot for one, it's very bad. But if they loot for two to just go all in and say we need as many cards as possible, then we at least get to shred another creature out of it. So we're attacking here. We're just going to take this four. This can get annoying with the reflection of Kikijiki. Another fable. Is this the one that we can spell? Now we have a card that we can definitely cast here. I think we are supposed to keep the Borrower because we can strip out a token in response to our opponent's reflection targeting something. Right, this is going to be a Pyroblast on our guy. Yep. That's annoying. So we have this. We can bounce the thing that they try to do stuff with. Yeah, our opponent is ahead here. Now we can try and welder away this treasure token. The problem with that is our opponent will just crack it in response. So they so they won't get the ensnaring bridge in. So we can't protect ourselves using their ensnaring bridge. Serve them with some guys here. Okay, a lot of treasure out there. Many treasures. And clean up one of these and take four. So our opponent's going to try and just uh, draw a whole bunch, uh, make a whole bunch of guys with a reflection of Kiki Cheek. So we kind of have to keep this brazen borrower up to stop that from happening. Sure, I let just pet on. So each one of these represents a two-two. Which is why we need to have our borrower going. Troll of Kazadun. What does that do for us? Um, it lets us cast four drops. So it's probably better than keeping in hand. I don't necessarily think we play this in case we have a brainstorm though. So we have to wait till our opponent ends the turn, try to copy their reflection, and then we get to bounce it. Here. We know our opponent doesn't have a pyroblast or anything. This is just sort of uh, treading water and buying ourselves some more turns. We need to play something massive like a Merc Tide and start swinging with it. But it becomes very difficult for us to take anything out of play that our opponent has using our Welder or their Welder. Because they all their artifacts they have right now are ones that they can just sacrifice in response. Not to mention the fact they have an Engineer so they can sacrifice other stuff too. It's going to be real tough from here. Now it's a Fable that we bounce their hand. They get another 2-2. But they can just do the whole make a load of reflection stuff again in a sec. So they'll be coming in with both shaman tokens, I believe, here. No, interesting. Schooling time. This can get a Mystic Sanctuary, which can put something on top of our library. But we don't really have many good options. All right. Uh, I think we're on the get killed by our opponent turn. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven two twos. Seven, eight... 9, 10. That's 20 damage. We give a lot for it. Yeah, our opponent should have this. We just can see this one. All right, Painter, you say. Null Rod, pretty handy for this. Plague Engineer also does a decent amount of work. Search Extraction is very nice as well. Shoulder Review is pretty decent. Uh, Hydroblasts are good. Dress Down is pretty reasonable. Borrower has text. I do not like our two for one counter spells against the a million pyroblast deck. So these can come right out. Get rid of those counter spells. Snuff out is okay. We find three cards here. Then they're gonna have some more graveyard hate, so the reanimate's gonna be less useful, so we'll trim on that one. Do we want the borrower here or not? Uh the Narset, also not amazing here. And it probably is the borrower. Looking at these things, I can't really think what else I would want to take out. Let's go for something like this. Aim of the game is to shoot stuff, maybe mess with their graveyard piles using the extractions. Plague Engineer can ruin some of their goblins. Just, you know, kind of be a general nuisance for them. Uh, okay, this is fine. We've got a wasteland for for uh, as a saga. That's quite handy. We've got a brainstorm if we have an emergency and we need to do some brainstorms type shenanigans. Our opponent's only shown us red stuff as well, so I don't believe they're on the splash. Let's have a wasteland here. I think we'll pass this turn. If our opponent plays a painted servant or a goblin, 
the uh, engineer one, we can dress down in response, and then he never gets a name something in the painter or tutor with the goblin. And that's very good for us. There's a mountain, and nothing. So this turn we can ponder into another mana source, is the plan. Or are we brainstorming into another mana source? We already have a way of getting through the lock. This might be a pyroblastable brainstorm, to be honest. If I was our opponent, I'd consider pyroblasting that one. Um, okay. So our opponent isn't showing us the need for these wastelands. We'll put two of them away. Get this one out and we'll crack it now. Get ourselves a, an underground sea. Oh, we just want... We do want underground sea. We want to be able to cast Bowmasters or Dress Down here. Now, if our opponent has pivoted into a Blood Moon plan, then that's going to be pretty darn strong against us. But we have a Troll of Khazadun to find a swamp. We do have the one Lorien revealed to try and find an island. There is an Ezra Saga into our face-up wasteland. Uh, before they get the mana off of it, I'm going to wasteland it. So it never taps for mana this turn. Quite tempted to surgically extract their Ezra Sagas in their draw step. Um, sure, I think we can ponder here. Uh, I like a lot of these cards. So I think we have, we bury the troll, then the grief, then the push. So no, if we draw the push, if we need it, we have the underground sea. I think with what we have now, I think the scariest thing for me is another Rezus Saga. So I'm going to let them draw, and I'm going to surgically extract their Rezus Saga. Which isn't necessarily why we brought this in, but this is quite a potent use of it. Oh, we got one out of the hand. You'd love to see it. Uh, so what are we looking at here? Two Furies, three Fables, and a Braid, Dragon Engine. Yeah, pretty standard. They do have two Megas of the Moon in there. And they have a Megas of the Moon in hand. Interesting. Let's see what they play here. There's a Great Furnace. We're going to see the Megas. We're going to see the Engineer. We're going to see a Fable. We are just going to drop this Bowmasters, I believe. Now, they haven't got anything in hand worth keeping it around for. This at least slows down the Fable. Makes us be more mana efficient next turn. So we should have a Grief on top of our library, I think. And then another Troll. Do you want to grief our opponent and take out this Magus? The Magus can be kind of annoying for us. Right, so we take out the Magus here. Okay, and then we pass. We have Sauron's Ransom or Dress Down Fatal Push as available options here. So that's going to be a pretty handy one. I don't think they're going to be drawing extra cards. Oh, they could loot one card here. An Ancient Tomb. Okay. So now there are four cards in hand here. So I think they're going to attack first. Okay, they're not going to attack. Interesting. A Painter's Servant, you say. This will enable their Red Blast. So I'm going to float this Dress Down in play in response. So they can Red Blast this. And then we can uh, just clip the Painter if we want to. But we have to work for this Red Blast. And this seems a reasonable opportunity. Because this means this is a thing that Red Blast can hit. Whereas we don't want it hitting our Fatal Push. We need to remove their creature. Yep, here's a red blast. Yep. Are going to name blue or black? They're going to name black for the purpose of snuff out. What are we playing here? Is this the second painter or the engineer? It's the second painter. Interesting. Okay. I wonder if we're going to get punished for extracting their sagas. Troll of Kazadoom. I think we're on passing here. Now we could Sauron's Ransom and try and find a land. Let's try and do it all. But if we miss on land, then that's not going to be a great spot for us. Whereas this way... Right, so the Goblin Engineer... They're not going to play the Goblin Engineer, I don't think, until the Reflexive Kiki Jiki is... Oh no, they're just snapping off. I was going to say, if they wait one more turn, they can at least copy it in response if we have removal. So we'll let them fish something out thinking it's going to resolve. I think we're probably still casting Sauron's Ransom end of turn. Just be manner efficient, we can untap and then do the fail push. Okay, they've gone for the Dragon Engine. The value play. No attacks, interesting. One card in our opponent's hand. Blue, black, blue. Can I be the ring bearer? Was the last card in the hand of Pyroblast? Yep. Yikes. Okay. A brainstorm. I would like to brainstorm here. My hand is begging for some better things in it. Hydroblast. That is useful to me right now. Plague Engineer can be useful in the near future. 
snuff out looking the worst. So I think we're going to put them back in this fashion. So we need to kill this reflection of Kiki Jiggy first, I think. And then I think we're supposed to get rid of this Goblin Engineer while we still can. So this way, if they want to do for action Dragon Engine, they're going to have to unearth it and just get one grip of three cards instead of drawing three cards every single turn. Or every other turn, or whatever. A Soul Guide Lantern. What are we going to lose here? Probably the Grief, since there's any creature in the graveyard. That would be my guess. Interesting I didn't just unearth the Frecton Dragon Engine for five. Our opponent feels very far ahead right now. Are we trading here? Are we trading here? I think we are. I don't like it, but... I mean, we can afford to just get whittled down by this. So we have a Painted Servant on top of our... Sorry, not Painted Servant. A... We have a Snuff Out and a Plague Engineer on top of our library. This is going to draw them three, but this isn't going to stick around. It's just going to get exiled now. I don't think we want this Plague Engineer anymore. Like, it's okay on this board, but that's not a route to winning the game. Going to get something else. See. Draw a fresh card. A Ponder. All right. Help me out, Ponder. Um... I guess it's any order shuffle and maybe the ponder will come back a grief that's not what we want is it okay so we're going to hold this up so we can at least represent forcible blue card but our opponent has a lot of lines to beating us here the many pyroblast deck pretty good against the blue deck as it turns out magus of the moon yep that's a pretty good one too maybe we've been greedy with some of our fetches there but the problem is we have this tension of wanting to get our I guess our Mystic Sanctuary is no good at this point anyway. All right, they'll probably just have to win that turn. They decided against it. All right, Null Rod off the top, I guess. Polluted Delta. We play this out. Our opponent grind saves us. Yeah. They've done us there. Yeah, interesting. Maybe we should have been a bit more aggressive trying to find our basics, but we still will lose this game if we have basics right now because we're just going to get grind stained out. There's nothing we can do about it. So, yeah, a tough matchup. I do like Painter into sort of bluey type decks like this as a general rule. The many, many Pyroblasts can really jam you up. And Bowmasters isn't great here. If it gets to pick off a Welder and it's wonderful, but that's about the highest it can ever do. The rest of the time it's not really doing anything. It maybe stops them looting a little bit. So not ideal. We don't have much in the way of graveyard, uh, Artifact hate outside of the Nalrod. Which is only a Singleton as well. All right. Uh, we are one and two. Let's go to round four. If removal's good, our hand is great. Otherwise, it's a bit awkward. We're odds on for drawing. We also have the five cyclers as well to find stuff. I think I'm going to keep this on the draw. We've got a lot of points of interaction here. And we're odds on for drawing lands, I would say. We can definitely get punished here, though. If it's a combo matchup, then our hand is obviously going to be pretty bad but fishing we're gonna have less resources to fight a combo matchup with anyway because we wouldn't be fishing for like counter magic or whatever a ponder okay we chose not to shuffle all right it's our turn to draw a ponder uh a land okay we found another black spell scoring time from our opponent and nothing mm, getting a little bit concerned there's a wasteland so we've got shoulders edict snuff out fatal push all that sort of jazz but it feels like a matchup where our opponent is not really running that many creatures. Island Cycling. How I wish we have one of those. we got one more draw step before it gets awkward. A tropical Island. Okay. And there's a basic forest rather than Tropical Island we know about. An Uro. Okay. That's pretty good. It's definitely going to slow our roll a bit. Yeah. These are the sort of matchups that make me not like blue black scout at the moment i think all the beanstalk decks can just draw through what we're trying to accomplish okay so now we've now we've kind of painted ourselves into a corner here and we do want to keep the reanimates here these are probably getting rid of a ponder yes this is awkward and we are being punished for this keep now our opponent with a fetch land can make an array which i think we are what are we supposed to do with that Probably a snuff out. A Caracas. Teferi Time Rambler. 
I do not want to play against Teferi Time Reveler. Veil of Summer or a Force of War back, sure. We do have a Shoulder's Edict here, so we can try and kill this on our turn. Are they just going to cash in for a card right now in the face of potential Bowmasters? No, they're just going to plus one. That's good for us. All right. Uh, I will do some Swamp Cycling, please. Get ourselves an Underground Sea. A little bit late to the party, but each opponent sacrifices a Planeswalker. So I didn't get any value off of that Teferi. We have a snuff out for this Uro. If that doesn't work, we can then also fail push it. And then we have a big troll to shove down our opponent's throat and hope that does work. Now, it won't be long until this Uro comes back. Because that's what Uro likes to do. We will kill this now before they draw a card. Now, they might just Caracas this away. Okay, no. I think you're probably supposed to Caracas that just so you can get another card for free in terms of like the amount of cards you've got going on. But we'll see. Okay. Uh, I think we want to ponder first. Uh, grief is not amazing. We could take our opponent off of two green sources and try and strand the euro in their graveyard. But by the time they get there... Hmm, it was tough. I guess we could take the grief and then hard cast it next turn as another threat. That's probably okay. Put the wasteland, underground sea, grief. So I think we try and get ourselves big old troll, most likely into a source to plowshares. Yep. Six life. Undoing our reanimate, sure. But we have a grief to follow up with. And when we need to, we can sacrifice this wasteland to trigger a vault to kill the array. Up the beanstalk. All right. This is going to outpace any amount of discard that we can throw at our opponent. Card is real good. A flooded strand being cracked. A volcanic iron. All right. So we're like hot banners. It's going to be a, a mince and boo. Yikes. All right. That's probably lights out right there. Um, how are we supposed to beat this realistically? Um, I don't know. Is that that one? Then we're going to have to ponder. Yeah, how are we supposed to beat Minsk and Boo? I don't think we can afford this grief line anymore. No, I don't think we're beating this Minsk and Boo. Let's uh, respect our time and my lovely viewers' time as well. So, things that are interesting to me. Hydroblast can mess with um, Minsk and Boo as a hard answer for it. This on Hamster is actually pretty good, and it is just a threat. So distraction to deal with Uro once and for all, I'm not opposed to. Uh, the Palantir is a nice bit of card advantage, as is the Narset here. And the Turak dodges a be decent chunk of their removal. What do I not like here? I think our reanimation strategy is probably a little bit weaker. I don't really want to be playing all these counter spells into their Veil of Summers. Probably means there's a little bit less purchase for something like a Grief here as well. How much removal do we have and how much do we want? Uh, the Shoulders Edicts are good because they kill to ferry I'm gonna trim on one of these pushes do we need the the snuff out here probably is fine borrower is a threat that we can leverage here it's probably slightly better than the push but not amazing um all right let's try this oh, this looks familiar doesn't it um I will keep this, though. So we can grief them, and then we can give them the old Bowmasters business. Question is, what are we discarding here? So we're definitely using this to find a land so we can play Bowmasters. So if we cast this grief now, before our opponent gets to do Brainstorm stuff, is double Bowmasters going to be better, or is Bowmasters plus Turak going to be better? We don't really have the mana for Turak for a while, so I think we're probably going to bin off the Turak. Sorry, Turak. All right, Brainstorm, Prismatic Ending, The One Ring. A bunch of pretty reasonable cards here. I think we take out the, the Pending here. It's either Pending or the Brainstorm. I think it's the Pending there. All right, and then we'll cycle for another Underground Sea. Our opponent could just Wasteland us here and reset the game. They did not do that. If our opponent's desperate to fire this Brainstorm now, uh, they probably want to do it before we end up with two mana. 
We will just fire this bone masters off now. They can do a brainstorm, but it won't be into anything like a fetch land right now. Yep, so the brainstorm. Two bow masters into the ring is not a bad place for us to be. But I would rather be in the shoes of the bant control deck than the scam in this matchup. All right, let's get a clock going. So we have a choice of whether or not we want to pump our creature by one. Or we want to hold it back. I think we want to hold it back. All right, if our opponent's got sweepers of some description, we don't want to get caught by them. All right, so that's a it's a fairy amount of mana they have over there. But no endurance can come to play off this mana. Attacks. I would very much like to find another land. Does mean easing off on this bow masters potentially, but I think it's worth it. Source to plow shares on that guy, sure. And that's our regent grief. Are we really invested in this land? If we keep these, what are we doing? We can like grief and I think <sighs> the troll is a land, but I think I'd rather have a land right now. So we're gonna try and shuffle and hit one. We did not hit one. Alright. Maybe a slightly greedy route, but so there's a waste sound, we're just going to drop the ring into play. And it's going to put the Teferi in, and then they're going to bounce our little guy. And then we're going to be back to nothing. Not great. But a land off the top, which is what we've been trying to dig for. So we get to smash down one of these. Take out the Teferi. Stop this ring from being that scary. So we're now getting towards casting a... Tide. We don't have that much that's going to pump it, so it's not going to be huge yet. Alright, cycling their Lorien revealed. There's a Tundra. An Uro. So once our opponents finish resolving this Uro, we then get to ping them for one and grow our guy. But they outpace that with Uro, which is why these decks are so good. Like, they don't really care about Bowmasters that much. Um, right, I guess we go to tax here. So we have a similar choice to what we had previously. I think we will ponder again, though. We need to try and hit another land drop, and we need to get our Merc Tide doing stuff. Uh, I think this is the same problem we had before, so let's just shuffle and take a card. Right, Grief. Um, I think we kind of need this Shoulder's Edict to take out their little friend. So we get a road out. There is the One Ring. So they will get the protection, and then they'll draw a card, and we don't get to ping them, but we do get to ping our Orc and grow it. So they have to make the decision if they want us to have a slightly bigger Orc. Ping us for one and it grows to a 3-3. Three, three. So we can't hit them with a Grief right now. I hate this draw. Supreme Verdict is something I'm a little bit concerned about. There's no point attacking here. It just turns on the Wandering Emperor for them. So I'm a little bit concerned about uh, Supreme Verdict. A Brainstorm. Interesting. So there's a ping here. So they all just ping this guy. And each time it gets one bigger, so it shouldn't die. Yep. So now we've got ourselves a pretty reasonable threat. Take a little bit of damage of this. It does feel like they are supreme vertiging us here. Temporal mastery. That's a good one. Our opponent just goes so far over the top of us with their deck. Carpet flowers. That's a lot of mana. A lot of mana. A ponder. I still don't think we're supposed to ping off this bow masters. Now we fire off. All right. Our opponent's still got another turn after this because they got their bonus turn. But the ring's going to hit them for two. Yeah, they still got all this carpet now if they want. Going to be a tough one. Blue, blue. A ponder. Okay. This is going to ping them for one. Again, they've got so much control of what happens over the next turn because, like I said, they've got a whole other turn coming. They're seeing so many cards here. They didn't shuffle the library off the ponder, so they should have a way of getting around this. So they're going to take two damage from the ring. They can still tap the ring and be alive. Two white mana. Okay, so we're going to see something kill our bow masters here. A veil of summer. Okay, so this means that we don't get to ping our opponent. Leyline binding. This is going to take out our bow masters or our, or our orc army, depending on what else they've got in their hand. Now, we do still have an 11 power creature. But our opponent will go to one on their turn. Plow. So we're going to gain a lot of life here, but I'm not sure if that's going to do us any good. They got another ring here, or a Teferi to bounce their ring. Four mana. This is a Minskin Boo. Fourth Eolingus. Okay. 
So our win condition is our opponent's the one ring. So we're going to have to try and grief it out of our opponent's hand, whatever they're trying to answer it with. It's not a great strategy, but it's the one we have. A borrower. Force of will, ponder, surgical extraction, up the beanstalk. I think we take the ponder. That can find them something to answer what's going on over there. Also takes them off of the force of will for this turn. So let's just smash down a big merc tide. Give them something else to worry about. Ponder, ponder. It's not going to be that big a merc tide, is it? But it's going to be big enough to beat their life total. They can't use the surge of extraction because they haven't got the life to pay for it. So they have whatever cards they find off of the ring this turn to try and answer their own ring. They also have the beanstalk. So they've got four, they got five looks at something to answer their own ring. But they also need to answer our Merc Tide, which is an easier thing for them to answer, generally speaking. Uh, the Euro. I guess they can flash the Euro back into play. That's pretty good. Gains them three life. Still dead to our Merc Tide, though. They have one more redraw with the up the beanstalk. They can also bounce their own and replay it for, for more life. That's what we're doing here. It's good news for us. Sure. We got up to seven. They'll still be dead to their ring on their turn if our Mertai connects once. Ponder. Okay. They shuffled. I'm going to squeak it. Solitude. Oakley Doakley. So we need to stop this Uro being the thing. That's how we deal with this. All right. Now our opponent is still favoured here. They're drawing so many cards. Troll of Kazadoom. Do you do anything? I'm going to go with no. All right. Let's fire this off looking for a surgical extraction. Let's see the piles, opponent. Neither of these are surgical extraction. I'm going to choose part two. Um, set this arrow now. Our opponent does have a force of will in hand, so they have the mana to cast it. At least they'll have to pitch cast it. They do pitch cast it. Okay. Play this out and we'll pass. Right, they go to two. So they need to find an answer for their ring now. If they play Uro, they do get another turn. Unless they tap their ring. But if they tap their ring, they're probably going to have enough mana to do all the good things. It feels like we're getting clowned on a little bit here. Interesting they're going for the bounce on the Euro again. They just really value that extra three life here. Yeah. If they just leave it in play, then they get that three life every turn. So they kind of make it so they gain six life a turn to offset their ring. But will they go for another activation of the ring? They can just put the Euro into play now as well if they have two more green sources in their deck. In my experience with these sort of beanstalk decks is that the scan decks don't stand much of a chance. Like they have to have a really explosive draw and get in underneath them because this deck just grinds through people so effectively. Right, so we're up to nine here. Next turn they can gain another nine if they want to. Like this is pretty elementary for them to win this game. They are only down to 14 cards in library, which might be the best way that we get to win this game. As sad as that sounds. Uh, do you want to find a land here or do you want another card for the purposes of Brainstorm? I think we want another card for the purposes of Brainstorm. Let's just get further into our deck. A Wasteland. That's not going to do anything here, is it? Um, although, we can take out this Caracas. Again, we're playing in our turn so that our opponent can't hard cast a Force of Will. We've already seen one Force of Will here, so... Alright. So they're going to take four on their turn, then they're going to gain three, then they're going to take four, and then they're going to gain three, and they're going to gain six this turn, aren't they? Yikes. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're not a million miles away from casting this troll. Not that necessarily anything's going to resolve. My friend's going to go to... Oh, an endurance. Okay, is this going to target themselves? That would be weird with the... Uh, Uro in the graveyard. Unless they have another one in hand right now. I'll tell you what they do have, and that's mana. So we can dismiss these. We don't know where they are now. 
All right, so they're tapping their one ring again, so we are probably dead. So they might just have a massive fourth year lingus to kill us next turn. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, plus all the carpet mana. Yeah, how are we supposed to deal three damage to our opponent? Hmm, maybe a palantir and get lucky. I think they'll just let us draw a card with the palantir, to be honest, because that's the way they could lose the game. So, mince kaboom. Yep. So this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then next turn it's more and we're dead. Yeah, we got absolutely handled in that matchup. I think this, the power that Beanstalk decks have now is going to marginalise blue Black Scam a fair bit. That's why the blue Black Scam has dropped off. It's, uh, it went from about 15% of the meta to 9% of the meta since Wars of Drain came up. Obviously that's people playing new stuff as well, but... It's worth keeping an eye on. So we're going to the final round, trying to get the 2-3. Not an amazing record, unfortunately. Right, welcome to the final round. Uh, Island Ponder. And we've got some other bits and pieces. We'll keep this. So let's Island Ponder first. All right, the Reanimate is quite nice to me. I don't mind having another Wasteland available. Uh, having a Wasteland available, sorry. I think we will put them like this. I think we want to pitch the snuff out here. So we could have done this before the ponder and have slightly more of an idea what we're looking for. But oh dear, oh dear. Um, what am I worried about here? I guess we're going to take the proceeds the mirror. That's the scariest thing here. Maybe we should have buried the reanimate on top so we could draw it next turn. That would have been smarter than what we've done here. But we do have a wasteland on top for an Ezra saga. Right, so draw a bad lands for turn. Now we're going to get thought seized. This Shouldred's Edict going to be pretty bad. Let's Wasteland so that we can hit the Ezra Saga in response to it having the Make Mana trigger. One of the only times it's right to be Wasteland your opponent straight up like that. Okay, so we have a Sauron's Ransom about to come into play here. We just need one more turn and that'll be good. Our opponent does have a Grief they can fire off they want us to not have this Sauron's Ransom. Experimental Synthesizer. That's an interesting one. Ornithopter. Sure. You can have an Ornithopter opponent. This is something to sacrifice to Culling the Weak. There it goes. I'm just going to hard cast this Grief. They're always going to take the Sauron's Ransom anyway. But I'd rather they didn't. So maybe make them have the Shoulders Edict to the thing that they can choose. Okay. non token creature. Let's just say no to this now. Not much in the way of resources going on for either of us now. They can just play Beseech the Mirror if they draw it, though. Right, they need one more mana for it, but that could be pretty bad for us. Right, Lines Eye Diamond, that never really sounds like a great thing for us. It means they don't have the mana to cast Beseech, so we might get to peek it with this Grief and take it away from our opponent. Troll of Khazadun. Now, we could just Grief now and take the card out of the hand and leave ourselves in top deck mode. Or we could wait one turn and get this troll going into grief. I think this is an awkward play, but I think our opponent's probably top deck slightly better than us because the whole deck's dedicated to doing the thing. Although we haven't seen any blue cantrips from them. We need to dodge a mana source this turn, I think. All right, so we've dodged the mana source. So now we get to hard cast the grief. That gives us a threat, and we can take what I believe is a beseech the mirror out of our opponent's hand. Our opponent could also start sacrificing exper experimental synthesizers to try and get a card into their deck. Because you can pay three to sack this and get 2-2 two, two Samurai. Which also then triggers the leaves the battlefield, give you an extra card. Electro Dominance. I don't really know what this does. Uh, deals X damage to anime, cast a spell, and anime, X, unless we have not paying its mana cost. I'm going to take this thing I don't really know or understand. <laughs> like, nobody's done anything fair with this card ever, right? Next uh, any target. Hmm. All right, so now we're going to lose our reanimate here. And we're going to be grief racing, but we're ahead on the clock. Goodbye, reanimate. All right, we are very far ahead now. Bash for three. And that, our opponent's deck looks really cool. I don't really know everything that's going on with it, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. Let's just make the biggest guy we can make here. Try and put this game to bed as quickly as possible. Oh, we got nothing here, so let's just... F6, we can always undo it if there's some sort of Echo Vions, but I don't think there is. Let's bash for 11, and then we bash for 11 again. 
Uh, is this just gonna be cracking the synthesizer? Yeah, okay, sure. Lotus Petal, that's not a very exciting one for them. Gives them a samurai. They bash for three here because we can't block because of the menace. Unless they want to hold these both back to block the grief, but that doesn't really help them out. Alright, let's cast a ponder. Uh, any order in shuffle, please. A reanimate. Uh, okay. Let's reanimate their fury. This is pretty grace. Alright, our opponent's deck, I'm not entirely sure. I think the it probably has like a scary package with some reanimates. But it's mainly using them for cutting the weak action. Okay, so I think Null Rod is going to be very good here. I think Social Extraction is definitely going to have some relevant text here and there. Uh, Flusterstorm probably. Hydrath maybe. So I think we're going to want our counter spells here. I think it's our cheap removal like Fatal Pushes that looks bad. So those can go and I'm not convinced by Snuff Out either. That gives us 60. How much do we want to get rid of our opponent's um, Furies and stuff like that? We could play this other Shoulders Edict. Is that better than a Brazen Borrower? The Brazen Borrower could mess with their tutors if they have things like Infernal Tutor. We can bounce something with it on the stack after they've already cracked their Lion's Eye Diamonds and just ruin their turn. That's not too shabby. I think Nasa is fine. Our opponent might be able to draw some extra cards of their deck. How much are we respecting the Furies? Like, we can always, like, reanimate their own Furies to take out their Furies and things like that. I, don't know, I think I'm okay with it like this for now. The Hydroblast can hit the Fury. But they're most likely going to be evoking it and then reanimating it. I think the Surgical is probably going to be better for that sort of thing. And we have a Surgical. We have a Flutterstorm. We've got the troll into reanimate. We got a lot of stuff here. We don't have anything for turn one, so if our opponent just has a turn one kill, we do lose. I thought so. What would you like to take? It could be Well, it's probably not gonna be the troll, because we can reanimate that ourselves. It could be the surgical, depending on what the hand looks like. It could be the flusterstorm. So the flusterstorm, okay. Right, Mox Opal. Analyze our diamonds, so they've got some mana up here. Let's aim it to us. A force of will. Not a helpful draw with the amount of blue cards we have in our hand right now. But Beseech the Mirror can't do any guy's will lines, so that's nice. Underground Sea, that's not really what we wanted either. Let's ping this off, and... I think I want Bowmasters here rather than the Troll, maybe that's a mistake. Maybe we wanted the Troll instead. And we'll find out soon. Troll Clocks, but this is disruptive. So, a Surgical, another one. Um, okay, I guess we will... Cycle this. Let's try and reanimate our troll. Right, we're just in with it. All right. Would have loved to have drawn a blue card this turn instead of the C, but oh, sorry, instead of the surgical. But we have two surgicals to try and beat whatever our opponent's up to. Interesting. Right. So now we have forcible blue card. We're just going to serve with everything. So this is the sort of matchup that you want to be playing scam for. Probably should have played the land there instead of holding it for Brainstorm, but I think it's much of a muchness at this point. We just need to survive this one turn, so. A Grief. How do we feel about Grief? If we counterspell this, I think we want to preserve the information of our hand here. This also stops them from casting Cutting the Weak, which can get them the mirror. Why would I force Grief? Because you play Cutting the Mirror. I, why, I don't understand why I wouldn't force the grief against your cutting the, the, cutting the wheat deck. Especially when you're clearly not casting anything for a bunch of turns. I don't know. Alright, so we got the 2 3, which is not a great result. We did get bodied by a bit of control here, though. The, the Yorion deck did make a bit of a fool of us. And we did get beaten by Cradle Control as well, which was kind of annoying. They just kind of kept playing guys and doing stuff and. Maybe we kept a bit of a sketchy hand. Like I think Blue Black Scam is still a fine deck. What we're doing is intrinsically powerful. You've got all the cantrips to find your answers. You've got powerful threats. You've got disruption. So I think it, you know, is still a strong strategy. But I think the problem is these Bant style decks now can really prey upon decks like this. You just they can just take out your threats and they don't feel that threatened by bowmasters, because they have so much life gain and removal. 
Like you can happily cast an Uro into a Bowmasters and be fine. So I'm not a big fan of where this deck is in the format right now. I think there are some builds floating around with Dante Voidwalker. A friend of mine came, I think, ninth in the Legacy Four Seasons with a build that had Dante Voidwalker in. And I just feel that's somewhere I'd rather be because Orcish Bowmasters isn't that good of a threat, right? Whereas Dancing Void Walker is a pretty fine threat and also has some synergy with some of your discard and things like that and counter spells because you can counter something, get into the void and have a really tasty thing to play back. I think that's where I would rather go with one of these decks. But I think right now I'd probably rather just be playing some sort of Beanstalk deck. I feel that's good. Like We do have the Narsets here to try and counteract that a bit. But I think maybe we need more Narsets. Maybe instead of having the two Sauron's Ransom, we probably want some amount of Narset. Obviously, Sauron's Ransom helps power out Merc Tides quite nicely because it puts more cards in the bin. So it usually puts three cards in the bin when you cast it. Um, but yeah, this deck's fine. I think we were struggling a little bit with some of the matchups we had. But overall, it was not a terrible showing of the deck. I don't think it was a great showing either. It was kind of like a... Yeah, we had some hands where we just like felt unbeatable. Then we had some hands where we worked a lot and we were just kind of getting outclassed for what was on the other side of the board. I think this deck, when it plays a little bit slower, can struggle a bit because the answers you have are a little bit niche. You know, you've got Force of Will, which is a great catch-all. But then your removal is Snuff Out, which doesn't always hit stuff. Orcish Bowmasters, which doesn't always hit the things you want. Shoulder's Edict, which again doesn't always hit what you want if they've got multiple things in play. And Fatal Push, which is limited to CMC2 or 4, depending on if you can get the, the uh, Revolt, which isn't that difficult to get with our deck with Griefs and Fetch Lands and Wastelands and things. But it means that our removal is a little bit niche and can be played around and overloaded by some decks, like we saw with the Cradle Control. So personally, I, I'm not... A big fan of scam but like i said this is the deck that won the legacy challenge so clearly you know the ceiling on what you can do with this deck is quite high um, i don't have very many reps with this deck at all uh, obviously i've played different temporary decks but there's quite a lot of different stuff going on here compared to even something like shadow uh, which i've got a few more games with i'm more used to playing rug tempo rather than demir but even so um I think the deck is fine and you can play it. I think if you were to play it just before Wild Hill Drain came out, it was the best deck in the format, hands down. And now I don't think so. It's pretty good against a lot of these combo decks, but I'm just, I'm not happy about where it sits in the world of bank control, to be honest. All right, we are done for today. So thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and why not leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this deck. Let me know what you think of where it sits in the meta. Uh, I'm interested in your views. And by all means, check out the Discord and Patreon. I have recently uploaded a free article on my Patreon looking at how to build Turbo Depths in a budget format. So how to, you know, what are the essential things you need to get and what you can sort of pad the rest of the deck out with while you collect other bits and sort of different angles you can go to save yourself differing amounts of money. I think the cheapest version I managed to work out that is playable is like $130 or like 130 euros, whatever. So it's pretty affordable. And if that interests you, you know, it's free on my channel. And if you know people trying to get into the game, by all means, um, send them my Patreon on that free thing and they can have a look at it. Because what's really important to me is nurturing the legacy community. Like it's such a great format and I just want as many people as possible to play it. All right, ramble over. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.